1913, residents in the town of Salem and the city of Winston voted to consolidate their governments and their identities under a single municipal government creating the city of Winston-Salem. Although our community dates back to the founding of Salem in 1766, this union marks the official start of our city 100 years ago. Hello, I'm Jill Osborne, and over the next few minutes, we'll highlight some of the activities as Winston-Salem celebrates its centennial in May. It includes vintage cars, historical displays, great music, plus a parade that you don't want to miss. We'll begin right here at City Hall for the unveiling of a new historical marker and open house. It's not often we have a chance to come together and celebrate 100 years as a city. Today we celebrate the combining of the towns of Salem and Winston into the twin city of Winston-Salem. We come together to commemorate that erasing of that invisible fence that divided the two communities and we celebrate the wonderful city that we know as Winston-Salem. So we're beginning today four days of celebration. Rest and listen to your movement. to the city of Winston-Salem. legacy of the consolidation of the two towns into Winston-Salem. Happy birthday, Winston-Salem! Happy birthday, Winston-Salem! Happy birthday, Winston-Salem! Yay! Happy birthday, Winston-Salem! Happy birthday, Winston-Salem! This is Troop 910 saying happy birthday, Winston-Salem! Happy birthday, Winston-Salem. Happy birthday, Winston-Salem. Making the Twin City wasn't an easy task. Differing social values and political views set relations between the two towns off to a rocky start. A new documentary shown here at Aperture Theater tells us how and why Forsyth County came to have two separate municipalities so close together and how they ended up consolidating in 1913. One hundred years ago, Winston and Salem, two independent municipalities, merged their governments and their identities under the hyphenated name of Winston-Salem. It was a unique consolidation in the history of North Carolina. Virtually every other county grew up around a single central municipality. From the start, however, Forsyth County had two. The result was government and duplicate, with two town councils, two police forces, two fire departments, and two water companies. 
And yet, from a bird's eye view, these two municipalities comprise a single, contiguous urban area delineated only by the center line of a street. The story of how Forsyth County came to this peculiar arrangement is fraught with political rivalry, the conflicting desires of business and religion, and the accidents of geography that dictate how cities grow. Well, I think it really, it really brought together both communities, and it, the bottom line was it wasn't going to work without one or the other. That's right. You know, if you left one out, the name, our, our destiny was probably sealed. You know, so I really, uh, it really was probably fate and luck. You know. Great job. I think I think that really made uh, made a difference. Sure, you can read it, but uh, the pictures and putting the story together, especially with those wonderful historians, that was great. I've heard and I've seen in different ways, but I, I think we did a great job in terms of being able to pull it all together and then uh, go back to the history and then bringing it all back. I think it was great. I thought this was a, a, an excellent show. It talked about the history of Winston and Salem. Uh, the city was too big to have the Winston name. It, it was too wonderful to have the Salem name. It, it had to be both. And it was a wonderful movie, and I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more history from the great city of Winston-Salem. I thought it was a great movie. I learned an awful lot about uh, Winston, uh, particularly Winston more than Salem, because Salem has such a, a present currently in the city with old Salem, but Winston... Uh, the roots go back almost as far. It was very much of a manufacturing uh, community, and it was. Uh, I just recommend it for anyone that has an interest in their community to learn about it. You know, having spent all of my life here, there were still lots of things I didn't know about my my hometown. I guess it reinforced that the blending of the Moravian work work ethic and the record keeping, and that they are were very inclusive, um, and then the in. The industry giants, you know, of Reynolds and Haynes and Gray, you know, they really did complement each other or they kept each other in balance. So one didn't become repressive of the other. And I thought the last comments of that it always had to be Winston Salem. Uh, it could, or it had to be something different because without the one, there couldn't have been the second. Without the second, there couldn't have been the third. So it really gave me a a new appreciation of the history of my hometown. And I thought it was beautifully done. And um, I hope to see it again. The history lesson may be over, but not our centennial activities. The celebration continues Friday with the Centenarians Luncheon, followed by the Blue Moon Gallery Hop and Community Centennial Toast. For WSTV 13, I'm Jill Osborne. Winston or Salem? Before 1913, you could live in either town. In fact, did you know in 1878, the first attempt to merge the two towns together failed by a three to one vote in the town of Winston. However, in 1899, the U.S. Post Office decided to consolidate its two offices into one, forming the Winston-Salem Post Office. And it only took 14 more years for the town of Winston and Salem to agree to join together. So a century ago, the towns of Winston and Salem came together and were connected by a hyphen, which formed the bustling city of Winston-Salem. I'm Jill Osborne and you're watching how Winston-Salem celebrated its 100th birthday. We began our coverage at the Centenarian Luncheon at the Benton Convention Center. Because I always called it my home because I would always live close to Western Salem. Uh, oh, well, it was just such a wonderful place. People were so nice, and the arts, one of the things I was very much concerned with, that's why I turned into photography. Uh, but so many things, uh, it's too numerous to mention. Uh, 
the good things that I found here and stay. After we met some folks from Winston-Salem's first century, we checked out some of what happened during those first 100 years at the Blue Moon Gallery Hop, along with some early evening entertainment with Reagan, Reynolds, and East Forsyth High School jazz ensembles. I heard my teacher say uh, Centennial Celebration of Winston-Salem. The first thing that came into my mind was tobacco and just the uh, Winston-Salem skyline and that's it. Um, well, thinking about Winston-Salem, um, the origin, Winston and Salem, so I went down to Old Salem, which is kind of the beginning, and started taking pictures. Well, my art teacher, she said that she wanted me to, um, to do a book sculpture that had to do anything with Winston-Salem. And so I chose, when she said Winston-Salem, that was the first thing that popped into my head. The, um, the Wachovia building. What better way to celebrate than with a toast? It wouldn't be a toast without Centennial Brew from Foothills Brewery or a bottle of Centennial Primo Water. bring a toast to the wonderful city of Winston-Salem. I want to thank, take just a moment and thank Ed McNeil, the gentleman who is here just now. He has been the chief staff person to make all this happen. So Ed, thank you so very much for your hard work on that. So if you would, raise a bottle or a glass or a container of whatever you might have with you. Here's to Salem, that village settled by the Moravians in 1766. It was respected for its architecture and attention to detail for its buildings as well as its music. It was a trades town with skilled craftsmen that people traveled from across the region to buy tools, furniture, ceramics, and metal products. And here's to Winston, 
founded in 1849, named after Revolutionary War hero Joseph Winston as the county seat of Forsyth County. It grew into an industrial center with over 40 tobacco companies, many textile companies, and other manufacturing. But most importantly, here's to Winston-Salem, a city of 230,000, home to Fortune 500 companies such as BB&T, Haynes Brands, the Carolinas headquarters of Wells Fargo, Wake Forest Baptist Medical, Novon Health, and over 6,000 other companies. It's home to five institutions of higher education. We have the largest urban research park in the country. We have the first arts council in the United States, as well as an outstanding array of cultural amenities and arts organizations in our city. So ladies and gentlemen, here's to Winston-Salem, the city of arts and innovation. May it continue to prosper and grow and so that all of its citizens benefit from this prosperity. Cheers. And then it was time to party in the streets with the Vagabond Saint Society. Darkest hour is just a cold Each night before you go to bed. Uh, behind me is a 1905 American La France steam fire engine. It was purchased by the Salem Fire Department in 1905. And then when the two cities merged, it was used by both cities um, all the way up until 1938. It was pulled out of a uh, warehouse over here on Liberty Street um, to use on a fire downtown in 1938. This is a 1923 American La France uh, fire engine. It was purchased with a group of three other engines in 1923 and uh, it was one of the city's first motorized fire apparatus. Um, it kind of rang the, era, the end of the era of the uh, horse-drawn fire apparatus. So Winston-Salem is a very interesting, diverse city. Um, it's had a lot of firsts. It was one of the first colonial water systems. It was one of the largest fire departments in the South. Had uh, the first integrated firehouse in the South. Had the first paid woman firefighter in the country parked here. So there's a, there's a lot of first in Winston-Salem, and I think it's time that so this is a good chance to take a look at it. Basically, this is just a celebration uh, and artifacts of our 100, history, 100 years uh, history of our department, of the, of the combined department, when Winston and Salem combined together. There's a photograph of how we used to address things to the, the FBI and how it had to be addressed. Uh, it's just the stories of some of the officers that when they've submitted the photographs and uh, some of the just getting to know the officers uh, is some of the fun things that we've we've done over this. The um, old cameras that we have that were police issued equipment that nobody's ever seen unless you've gotten in trouble. So as the party continued on Friday night, Centennial Revelers look forward to a full day of fun on Saturday, including Community Day at Old Salem, the Centennial Parade, the Centennial Scavenger Hunt, topped off with a party at the Plaza. For WSTV 13, I'm Jill Osborne. Thanks for watching. I'm Jill Osborne and welcome back to our coverage of the Winston-Salem Centennial Celebration. Saturday's festivities begin with Community Day at Old Salem, a living collage of community activities commemorating our 100th anniversary. And to mark the celebration, Old Salem visitors receive free admission for the entire day, from guided tours to hands-on activities in Salem Square. Community Day at Old Salem was the perfect place to get the Saturday party started. Salem was started in 1766 by the Moravians, so this is a church town. So you see the church there on the corner that was the, the cornerstone of this community. Um, the taverns down the street, the single brothers and single sisters house. So um, the Moravians started this community a long time ago and luckily it's still preserved today. We have a lot of activities. Um, as you can see, hoops and sticks rolling here um, like the kids would have played long ago. We have bubble blowing with rye straws up at the Veerling House. And, Quill pen writing. Um, we also have 
chocolate demonstrations, the historic chocolate from um, Amer Mars, American Heritage. So we have demonstrations and tasting of that. We're cooking with it a little bit today too. Um, so just lots of hands-on activities, marble making, all the buildings are open. So lots of fun, lots of activity. And while that was going on in Old Salem, people were putting the finishing touches on the Centennial Parade. Beginning in January, the city opened a, a competition for community groups to submit proposals for designs to decorate floats representing each decade of the city's history. And um, they were notified uh, in March that whether they had been accepted or not. Uh, and a lot of the, the groups picked um, decades that were relevant to their organization as they were founded in that particular decade. Like Habitat for Humanity is doing the 70s decade float as they were founded in Winston-Salem. Uh, Theater Alliance was founded in 1983, I think. And they're doing the 80s float and they're doing this amazing job of um, depicting landmarks, buildings that were constructed in the 1980s. Uh, and you can see um, the tremendous amount of work went into that, which is amazing because they weren't able to start doing the decorating until this morning. Uh, the floats didn't arrive here until this morning, so they had to do all of this planning, all of this uh, setup and um, thought going into how they could construct something really, really quickly, and they've done an amazing job of pulling off their designs. In the parade, there are also going to be a lot of vintage cars because we have, I think, 23 honored citizens, and those are people who've um, been significant in Winston-Salem in one way or another in its history, and they had to be nominated by other people in the community and be accepted uh, to do that. So they're going to be riding in a lot of those vintage cars, and we have uh, cars all the way from the 19-teens until um, uh, the present day. We also have a, uh, a lot of entries from the fire department. We have a 1901 think fire truck is going to be on a flatbed. Uh, we have a couple of vintage fire trucks and then at the end of the parade um, there's a pink fire truck that's in honor of uh, breast cancer survivors. So it's just a lot of fun and we also have a lot of uh, walking groups from the community and um, they're going to be holding signs listing things that happened during the city during that decade. So they're going to be sort of with the decade floats in the cars too. So it really is going to be a moving timeline of the city's history, which was our intention from the beginning. And it's really exciting after all of this planning to see it finally coming together. through the last 100 years and through an interactive city tour, also known as a good old-fashioned scavenger hunt through downtown Winston and Old Salem. The scavenger hunt gave contestants an opportunity for fun and a chance to learn about the two cities' rich history and a chance to compete for prize money. The race was originally supposed to start at the Dash Stadium, so we just kind of thought of a pun to go with running around the city and the dash and so mustache came up and so we went with it. The scavenger hunt is going to be uh, 13 locations in Old Salem and 13 locations in downtown Winston-Salem. The participants will be given a list of places that they will go. They have three hours to go to as many places as possible within the downtown area. They'll have photographs taken in the different places that they go. There's a competitive version so if you want to compete the people that have numbers with a dot on them, they're going to be competing for prize money. That means that they want to be fast. And then there's other people that just want to take a stroll around downtown. So you can either race against time or just like walk through time. And uh, do you think you're going to win? Absolutely. <laughs> This, this year, yeah, it's the last time, so yeah, we're going to win. One of the locations is mandatory. It's the very first one on the list. Make sure that all of you go to this because you're going to be part of a public art installation. Each one of you will be part, uh, painting part of a mural that will be going around to different locations downtown. <laughs> okay, ready? 
send up one member to get your packet. This is a mural that depicts Winston and Salem, and it encompasses um, some of the early sections of Winston and also, you know, the later skyline. And just some little things, like it has, um, we tried to get some of the industry in, like Krispy Kreme is in here and the knitting mill. Um, there's the Safe Bus Company and RJ Reynolds will be in there with a the camel. Um, there's also the Twin City Hospital, the original hospital, so we have a lot of little things that made the city. They find a section and they have to fill it in and they take their picture doing that section and that's the part of it. And while the scavenger hunt was in full swing, the performance stage was heating up at Corfining Plaza with the soulful sound of Rhonda Thomas. There are those I am sure who have told you that would give you the world for a toll. But all I have are these arms to swim with all you. And the love of time can never destroy. And if you're wondering what I'm asking, before the night was over, we stopped by the scavenger hunt after party at the Civic Plaza to see the top prize winners. All right, we're going to go ahead and do our winning teams in third place that did the run, uh, hunt and met every criteria, went to every location in one hour and 42 minutes is the Ardmore Ruse. In second place, Team OPP that finished the race in one hour, 32 minutes, and winner of $50 is Team OPP. Well, I just wanted to say congratulations. You all predicted this. <laughs> yes, we did. Thank you. How was the race? It was good. This year it, was, it wasn't It was as hot. It was fun. We saw a lot of things that we haven't seen since last year's race, so it was great. And what did you win? Uh, well, just winning was all we wanted. hundred dollars. <laughs> You're happy. What are you going to do with the money? Go have dinner and a beer. <laughs> well, you enjoy it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. It's been a hundred years since the towns of Winston and Salem were joined together by a hyphen. That simple punctuation mark transformed two unique towns into one, making them, for a time, North Carolina's largest city. The centennial celebration reminds us of where we came from and where we are today. Covering the centennial for WSTV 13, I'm Jill Osborne. Thanks for watching. Salem was founded as a religious community, so what better way to end the celebration on Sunday than with a community worship service? We are so glad that you all are here to honor what God has done for our city, Winston-Salem, these past 100 years. Together we will pray, we will hope, and we will look towards a bright future. We seek your face, your guidance, and salvation. Without you, Lord, we are nothing. As we now conclude our four-day centennial celebration, we ask for your blessing and peace. Oh, my God, he will not delay my refuge and strength always. As citizens of Winston-Salem celebrating this 100th anniversary, May we never forget the era. We are here 
to enrich the world. Loving people make a difference. May there be peace within the borders of our fair twin city, Winston-Salem. May all its inhabitants know peace and tranquility, wholeness and well-being. Our twin city has joined and was joined because there were benefits that commerce and spirituality could bring to one another. The last 100 years have shown us that division can exist even though two names are brought together. May we recognize, though, that all that divides us is but a hyphen or a dash. There should be nothing in between us which might prevent us from seeing the other and realizing that, in truth, there is nothing in between us but betweenness. Three gates in the east, three gates in the west, three gates in the north, three gates in the south, twelve gates to the city, hallelujah. The very first Moravian love feast in 1727 was a spontaneous event in a little village in eastern Germany. It followed a worship service in which the Holy Spirit moved in the community people's hearts to overcome great division. These recollections perhaps provide some themes for us to consider at our love feast today. Authentic community that overcomes division and affirms and appreciates the diversity in our midst. A sense of journeying and building together and thankfulness for the resources that God provides and a commitment to tend and to care for this place, our place. Let us love one another, for love is from God. And God requires of us to love our brothers and our sisters. And if we say we love God, we must love one another. We have hope for tomorrow, hope for a better city, hope for an equal partnership, hope for a continuing cooperation, hope for a compassionate city. Hope for those of us who know that God has brought us this far along the way. Hope to reach down and come down and down and pick somebody up. That we all may be in this together. And then we all will sing on that glorious day. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art. I have been impressed as I look past, look to the past as each generation before us has moved this city forward. Our challenge today as we sit here as citizens of Winston-Salem and all those who are not here that are in our city is to de de dedicate ourselves to doing our job to be sure that we have the wisdom, the courage, and the foresight to move this city forward. We currently carry the torch of this city that has been passed to us and it is our duty to carry it proudly and to pass it to those who will come after us. We certainly are a city with a rich history, but we're also a city with immense potential. And I truly believe as we sit here today that our finest hour still lies in front of us. We have wrapped up four days of wonderful celebrations today. We've recognized our past and we've remembered those strengths and the fabric that has made us what we are today. But today we begin our second 100. We're going to remember our past always. We'll remember that always going forward. But here's what we're going to do. We're not going to look back to what we were. We're going to look forward to what we will become. So what I ask you to do today is to grab a hold of some piece of this future. We planted a lot of seeds for our future, but it's going to take nurturing. 
take each one of you to grab a hold and make it happen. So I'd ask you today to move forward with us, to love one another, to love our city, and to make us even more special when uh, some group gathers 100 years from today and celebrates 200 years. So it's up to you to make it special. Thank you very much.